Isao Takahata said, Well, a guidebook called Roman Album was published after the release of the film. I've talked about this so many times, but in the book, Takahata Pan Nauska giving it 30 out of 100 to mark it as a failure. That's so harsh. He said, quote, I as a producer thought it was perfect, but I as a friend of Miyazaki thought the work was only 30 out of scale of 100, considering what he can offer. Of course, an adaptation of the original comic book story to the film was fairly good. Still, I anticipated that this film would bring Miyazaki to the next level. That's why I can only give it 30 out of 100. I think what Takahata couldn't stand was that Miyazaki did not depict the life in the Valley of the Wind and that he used salvation of God as the theme. This is because. He adds the reason he dislikes the film in Ghibli's textbook, Volume 1 for Naushka, published by Bunge Shunju. It's written in page 151. He said it does not reflect the modern society. It means that he could not see how it was linked with the modern society and civilization. The Valley of the Wind seems to be agricultural society, but also seems that it's not. He said Miyazaki failed to answer or intentionally ignore the question. How people should live in the post apocalyptic world. As I mentioned in the previous lecture, Naushka knows that the world, purified once again, is lying beneath the toxic jungle. Yet, she refuses to immigrate to that world. She does not attempt to bring the people of the valley to the world under the toxic jungle. She claims that the Valley of the Wind, a place where people get sick and die at an early age, is the society, the world they have to cherish. But the reason is not depicted. How their life in the Valley of the Wind, where people die at an early age, could be more precious than in the New World beneath the toxic jungle is not depicted. Takahata clearly stated that was because there were too many action scenes. He thought that the battle with the giant warrior was okay, but it was something that could have been omitted. He thought Miyazaki should have depicted the life in the village instead. For example, how the villagers cook in their kitchen, how they eat, how they sleep, what are the children's rooms are like. None of these are in the film. Is this how Hayao Miyazaki's film should be? He does have a point in the film. The life in the Valley of the Wind is not depicted at all. And Takahata criticized Miyazaki for not giving enough time to depict everyday life in the village. That's true. We do kind of take it for granted that there is a life going on in the Valley of the Wind, but that's not depicted in the film at all. There is almost no scene where you see people eat, like you see a lot in other Miyazaki films. All you can see is Nausuka and Asbel eating chico nuts that taste awful. However, Miyazaki just couldn't use much time depicting the everyday life in the Valley of the Wind, considering how traumatized he was by the Castle of Cagliostro fiasco. Remember, Miyazaki made Naushka after the Castle of Cagliostro, that biggest box office bomb in the history of Toho animation films. The enraged executive of Toho Cinema said, I've never seen an animation film this unpopular. That was Cagliostro, a film that deprived Miyazaki of opportunities to make new films for years, and Naushka was the next chance Miyazaki finally got. So he couldn't take the risk. If he spent time depicting the everyday life, it would just be like, no offense, it would be like Horus. Miyazaki cooperated with Takahata to make the great adventure of Horus. The everyday life was depicted meticulously and ended up being the worst box office nightmare in the history of toy animation films. He could not take the same path. The depiction of the everyday life takes so much time, and the running time will exceed three hours. The running time actually did become close to three hours with the first draft of the storyboard. Now, there's a magazine book called Mook, and there is one title, Manga DNA. The God of Manga Successors, which was published to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Osamu Tezuka Cultural Prize. It's too heavy, so I didn't bring it here today. Anyway, Toshio Suzuki gave a comment in the book Hayao Miyazaki always keeps a deadline. He never missed a deadline when he was doing a comic series of Naushka. And that is Takahata's influence. This does not mean that Takahata keeps the deadline. When they were young, before I met him, they created an animation film called The Great Adventure of Horus. It was scheduled to be made in a year, but Takahata took three years. They got into a huge fight with the production company, who told them that if they couldn't make the movie, the production would be cancelled. I heard Miyazaki cried. They took three years. The company said that Takahata promised it would be done in a year. 
They were not doing this anymore. The production would cancel. Miyazaki recalled how hard they had to negotiate with the company, and knowing all his effort was not to have the project canceled. He was completely lost. That made him just burst into tears. Meanwhile, Takahata couldn't understand the feeling of Miyazaki sobbing and simply said that it's almost done. They have to resume the production. He said it like there was nothing wrong. Miyazaki, when hearing that thought, what is this guy? He is way beyond unbelievable. And so he made a promise to himself that when he got a job with Deadline, he would never break it. About this attitude of Takahata, who only cared about the quality of the film and not what others had to go through, Miyazaki clearly thought, I cannot go that far. The guy is inhumane, just scary. So, referring back to Suzuki's comments, to meet the deadline, Miyazaki even now does not hesitate to delete any scene, no matter how significant it may be, once he feels that he is behind the schedule. In the storyboard of Naushka, there was a combat scene between the giant warrior and Ohms. Hideaki Anno, who later produced Evangelion and Shin Gojira, was working as a staff member for Naushka. He still says that he really wanted to make the physical combat scene between the giant warrior and Ohms. He still regrets it. That's how frustrating it was for him to give up the scene. This is Miyazaki's policy, regrettably curtailing the story and deleting important scenes just to meet the deadline. It's an emotional decision, not a reasonable one, but such a regrettable decision is impossible for Takahata to make. He took eight years to make the tale of the Princess Kaguya, without hesitation. If he was told that the production was cancelled because he's lazy, he'd just think, cancelled? Okay, what the hell? So, Takahata saw Nausuka as a product of compromise. The daily life scene was deleted to meet the deadline. And to put more action scenes to make it catchy for the audience. It was an unnecessary sacrifice that only negatively impacted the quality of the film. That's why the score he gave was 30. When he knew about it, Miyazaki got so furious, he ripped up the guidebook. But Suzuki pointed out that Miyazaki was fully aware of that when he directed Naushka. He told Miyazaki, you compromised. You made a film that could only get 30 out of 100 from Takahata who created Horus, a huge commercial failure. And your movie was a huge hit. I know you felt happy with the commercial success. And that made Miyazaki cry again. The word, I know you felt happy with the commercial success, made him cry because it was a message from the producer claiming that Miyazaki was enjoying the glory as a product of compromise, a massive backstabbing message. Miyazaki was like, even you, Suzuki? So he cried. I just love these episodes of Miyazaki. The other one of the factors Takahata couldn't stand was much more serious. The point I just mentioned was a scheduling issue, which was from the producer's point of view, but the other point of Takahata was more concerned with the concept of the film. I mean, Nashka. Excuse me, it's already past 45 minutes. I think it will take an hour for the first half again. Well, Miyazaki used the god salvation as the theme of the movie. How the humans who destroyed the natural environment should live. Miyazaki resorted to religion as a source of salvation and solution for the humans who destroy the natural environment. Unlike in the manga version, in the Nausicaa film, the birth of the toxic jungle in Ohms was nothing but a course of nature. What that means is that the Mother Earth just managed to cover or make up for the sins of humanity polluting the sea, the air, and the land. So the birth of the toxic jungle, the birth of Ohms, and the resultant regeneration of pure land, they were all a course of nature. This function of Mother Nature can be directly translated as an act of God. A simple adaptation of the concept of Christianity, a monotheism in an animistic world. Simple replacement of nature with God and vice versa. People are stupid, God is great. God gives us salvation. It's exactly the same. People are stupid, nature is great. The mother nature gives us salvation. The story is that simple. Sinner, people are simply saved. Like Jesus crucified on behalf of the human race, the toxic jungle sucked up the poison from the land to create clean water. Takahata criticized there was no difference.